So, obviously you're here to learn about niches. Uh, that's something I'm very passionate about. And those of you who don't know me, I'll kind of tell a bit about myself. Would it be rude just to shut the door yeah. Yeah, please? Okay. No, that's fine. So, yeah, I, uh, for those who don't know me, does anyone actually start? Does anyone come to my class this morning? On the yeah. Niches? So for myself, I've been in the business for just over six years now. I started as a buyer's agent on a team, a pretty successful team where we do about 100 deals a year. I was in the corner base there. I shared this yesterday. We moved for to get away from a crap relationship. We started fresh up there and wanted to just restart it. I don't know why I ended up that way. About four years ago, I joined Keller Williams, and I now work as a productivity coach in my office in Burlington. And I work with agents, new and experienced agents, and I help coach them in their business. And through that, I kind of got really passionate about niches. I had agents coming to me consistently saying, how do I do this business? Because when you get started, three or four things I teach you is door knock, cold call, open house, and I'm sure you guys have all heard that. And agents kept coming back and saying, there's got to be other ways, there's got to be ways to really get good at this business other than just this. Now, they're important, those things do work, but I got passionate about learning what are the ways that agents can grow their business. Because I've watched other agents who do completely different things and have been wildly successful. One agent does door knocks, does well, and three is the cutting door knock. So, I, uh, as a result of that, I ended up starting a podcast. So, as you may have seen it, it's the niche agent. I strongly suggest you check it out. It's thenicheagent.com. It's, uh, I interview people all across the world on their niche. And very, no, yeah, that's all right. Only important people. So I interview agents about their niches. I talk to them about how they got there, why they're doing what they're doing, and the success that they've had. And it's been a really great experience for myself, but also for their viewers. I had over 11,000 views on the podcast, so it's good audience and people are really resonating with it. So Virginia asked me to speak about niches because that's I love it. Glad you guys here. So Reed, you want to introduce yourself and go for us. Sure. Um Reed Joyner from Royal Page uh, in Mississauga and I work in the Mormon Command as well. Um, I really came there about four years ago and then kind of stick around. So uh, ended up sort of splitting my business half and half. Um, I trained as the Kilted Realtor and uh, that's what People will know me. Uh, that's cool. What's the call? I don't care what they call me. I have to stand up for you. You want me to stand up? Yeah, they have to see the job. So, yeah, every day I've been to be killed. <laughs> and um, the regular pair of that goes with it. Uh, it's really just a really good icebreaker for me, to be honest with you. Um, trading in Toronto, you know, one of 39,000 agents. Um, I guess it's just a different point for me that uh, allows me to open some doors that I didn't think would be able to be open before. So it's kind of fun. Okay. We'll go more in depth as we go along and kind of find out more about how it's affected your business. Thank you. Shuba. Hi, everybody. My name is Shuba. That's Lupta. And I uh, apologize a little bit ahead of time because I'm a little under the weather and you can't hear me. But um, I'm actually here um, more specifically to teach you the power of a niche and to help Ryan kind of express the point of the power of a niche. You probably won't learn a specific niche from me because I'm not a real estate agent. I'm actually a mortgage broker and I have a specific niche within the mortgage broker community that's specializing in private lending. And um, I've really learned the value of a niche and the power and how much business can be generated. So I'm happy to help kind of pass that along to you guys. So Barry just got here on that nature. So, my name is Barry Lilo. My niche is senior. Um, anything I, I like to say that my goal is to dominate the estate business uh, more than anything else. And the main reason is because I've never had a dead person ask for an open house. <laughs> but I love I love estates. I do family wars, estates, divorces, and um, the reason is I like control. Families are in turmoil and they need a professional. So, so. so you've been like two years ago? Two years, 47 years now. 47 uh -huh. years. So you know a thing or two? Uh, three. 47 years. 47. I'll do 67. Okay. 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 Okay.
Hi, I'm Michelle Hocko. I'm with uh, Remax Real Estate Center in Milton. And uh, when I first got into the business eight years ago, um, I was practicing in Brampton and uh, it was a couple years into the business when I had my first child. So my kind of story is, well, what do you do from there? Like, I, I didn't want to put my child into daycare right away. Not that that's, there's anything wrong with that, but I felt like I would never see them if I made that choice uh, in this business. So. I had to kind of find creative ways to market myself, and for a while I decided to sort of keep the two lives separate, thinking that, you know, you, you wouldn't want anybody really to know you're a stay-at-home mom when you're a realtor, and you can't really mix those two worlds, until one day I really discovered that you absolutely have to mix those two worlds, and people want you to. Um, I, had, I had entered into a, a kinder music class, which is a fruit-fruit baby music class with my, my oldest daughter. And um, I had my youngest daughter at the time, so it was a couple of years into motherhood. I had two babies in two years, so it was uh, quite busy. Did you figure out how that happened? <laughs> no, no, that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, so in this kinder music class, I, I kind of discovered that, um, you know, having the deck on my car, whatever, people would engage me about real estate, and uh, ended up doing, you know, one and a half, almost one and a half million dollars worth of real estate because of that kinder music class. Um, and kind of started to evolve from there. So you know, we have a lot of um, young families and a lot of opportunities for mommies to get together. Um, a lot of opportunity to host mommies in my house and run mom's groups to be part of a mompreneur group that's part of our community as well. Um, be part of all the, event, the events that go on in the community that the families attend and, and just bring them things of value there. So like giving out popcorn at an event instead of uh, business cards, you know what I mean? Um, just really do things to engage the community. I, I build a community events calendar monthly and uh, everybody likes to receive it. So I have a huge mailing list that receives that. Syndicated all through my social media and built up quite a following that way. And you know it's working when you're on the uh, the mom's Facebook groups because you know in your community there's going to be whatever your special interest is. There's going to be a Facebook group for it, and you know your name's getting thrown out there as a real person. Create character of the month. Yeah, that's true. So I, I <laughs> I'm very social media uh, thing, but anyway, I have an avatar and that's sort of my branding anyway. Um, she's all my signs and everything. But every month we we change her and just. Uh, I have this little avatar, and it's, it's me, cartoon me, standing beside a sign, and every month she's a little different. So, you know, at Christmas, she's Christmassy. At Halloween, she's in a costume. Um, one April for my birthday, <coughs> completely naked with censored bars, and, you know, it's just good fun. Never, 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 never noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you 12, know what? 12 times I didn't notice that. No, no, I know, but it's awesome because it's kind of giving me this free license to never have to talk about real estate if I don't want to online, although I do sometimes when it's warranted, but mostly it's uh, lifestyle marketing to you know the moms and what they want to know about as a community. Right. So as you can see, there's a vast difference in people's businesses and how they've done it. Um, and that's what's great about this business. In traditional businesses, doctors, lawyers, they have the same path, they all follow the same route, they end up being successful by following their own route. With real estate, you can do it any way you want. So we find with with niches, typically there's one or two things happen. Someone has a specialty or something they want to focus on. They get in, they get good at it, and then it becomes a passion that goes into it. The ones who are really good at it have a passion. Or they start off with a passion and then find work their niche around that passion. So as you'll see, I'm sure all of you guys are very passionate about what you do and the passion feeds your business and grows your business. So what is your passion and how is that fed into your, uh, to your business? So I agree. Passions. Um... I like some wall whiskey. <laughs> and I collect it. Um, I use it to fundraise. I give it as housewarming gifts. Um, when I first started the whole Kilton thing, I was really amazed at the number of people that are, as we call them, Alba fans. Alba being the other word from Scotland. So people that just end up being Scottish. Um, and the communities that, that are sort of Scots-oriented or Scots albophiles, quite honestly, is really different. I mean, I'm, I'm pulling clients from Jamaica because they don't historically, they're just going to map everything's coming out of Jamaica because the Scots in the 1800s were all plantation owners. The history's there. Um, the West Indies, same deal. Um, India and Pakistan were both British colonies and the soldiers that were in charge of that were Scots. Um, smaller communities and just little niches and stuff like that. 
Um, the big thing for me every January, of course, is Robert Bird suffers. Um, I've been invited to a number of different officers' messes throughout the province to sit down in rooms that are 150 years old and have a proper burnt supper with the full pipe, with the full regalia, and everything else. So I'm meeting military guys, I'm meeting guys that are reservists, I'm meeting guys that are <coughs> burns. Um, it's a huge pool of potential business. And it's just something that I like. You know, it's in my blood, so you sort of go with it. But it was um, a bit of a leap of faith before I decided to do it. I'm sure to wear the other end back. Minus 35 sucks for me. Right <laughs> just put it on. And bury yourself, obviously, you're passionate about what you, you mentioned earlier. Well, I, I always specialize in different areas. Um, I was 14 years old, and uh, uh, no, I was 50. I used to go to my grandfather's shop in the Hyde Park area. Tailor shop. My grandfather was a bespoke tailor, very expensive in the day, and uh, probably charging two, three dollars for a suit. They were forty dollars in the rack. It was a big deal. The guy comes in on my grandfather one day, and he says to him, "Jack, I want you to put some, change the cuffs or something." Maybe let out these pants. My grandfather, in a very heavy accent, takes these pants and throws them back. He throws them. I mean, literally throws them. The guy says, "You want an alterationist? I'm a professional." And I got a lesson that day. And when I got into real estate, I realized you can't specialize in everything. When I was, so I, I, I got recruited in 1968, I started real estate as an agent. And in 1969, I got recruited to come in and buy houses with a large private mortgage company. I became a partner very quickly. And when we were doing mortgage work, even, I said, we can't do keeps. Compete with the mortgage brokers who were charging on fees because fees are the worst thing. So I looked at a niche and we became the dominant force in interim financing in the city of Toronto. You were going to build something, you came to us to get your loans. And we came, you need a loan like that, you call me about And I did that in every aspect of real estate I've gone. Right now, the reason I'm in seniors is it's the, most, it's the only population growth that we've got. It's where the market is, where the future is. Michelle and I are in the same group, even though she does what she does. We are, she's one of the youngest people we have in the master's program. And we get to see each other quite often. Um, it's, it's a matter of, I can charge more. I have the phone rings because I refuse, I'm not a commodity. A niche person is not a commodity. Because the first question of people is, a woman did it to me the other day, I couldn't believe it, I heard her this long time. How much do you charge? Is there anybody here who doesn't get that? How do you handle it? I'll tell you how I handle it. My question was, here's my, do you want to hear a comeback? My comeback is very strong. I say, why do you care? That shouldn't be your first question. So if I say to you that shouldn't be your first question, what's the automatic response? What should be my first question? Your first question should be, do I have the ability to get you the maximum price possible through market journals. What do you care what I charge as long as you get the maximum possible? Mine is the most insignificant part of the process. And I, will, I refuse to work on fee. I refuse. That's not what you hire me for. You hire me, I get my fee. And don't ask me what my fee is. I'll charge you what I think is reasonable. I'll tell you I'm fine. But it's not, I'm not going to discount my fee unless you're my, one of my closest friends or my own. I'm a niche player because I want to make more money. Sure, you can do Well, I mean, to further what, what you were just saying a little bit, so kind of how I approach the niche situation. I mean, we've all heard the analogy, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're sick, you go to visit a doctor. If you need, if you need to see a lawyer, you see a lawyer. I mean, mortgage brokers, real estate agents, we all use it. If you need specialized real estate advice, you visit a real estate agent or a mortgage broker. Uh, I mean, when, you, when you're focusing on a niche, the difference becomes you become a specialist. So if you were a doctor, for example, you're now a neurologist, you're a cardiologist. So when people need something specific in that area... Sometimes they feel like a proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, in most cases of our business, yeah. But, they they but, only uh, deal... The Proctologists always only deal with assholes. <laughs> 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 That's what he told me. Lost my train of thought. <laughs> People are looking for a, a specific area of focus. 
he can lead us specifically during the focus. So the passion for me really, how, how the passion for, for my niche specifically came about was really filling the void. When I entered the industry, I found there was a void when I was young. I was unable to close deals. But the banks were turning deals down. Other mortgage brokers were calling me and saying, how do we get this deal done? What do I do? I filled that void with the private lender. Now my, my, my niche market, my specific niche, I get 85% of my referrals from other mortgage agents. So I help them with deals that they can't do. And I take my mortgage broker's hat off and I act as a lender. I really consider myself a lender now because I'm the one trying to help them get their money just as if they were going to TA Yeah, yeah, that's great. My passion. Well, well, my passion actually is my family, so I don't know how anybody else can agree with that in the room. So, and this is sort of where my target market sort of branched out from because when I first got into the business, and you know, obviously a couple years into coming along, I I wanted to spend as much time with my family as possible, and I wanted to bring as much money home as possible. So, um, I, I said yesterday we had a presentation, but like, who likes to spend money on advertising? You know, like nobody. Who wants to have a good time and go out and make friends and then get business along the way? Just by, by living your dream, right? Like just by enjoying your, your hobbies and going for hikes in the conservation area and writing blog posts about what's fantastic about your community. So, you know, like I love my community and I love my family and I figured out how to kind of leverage that to give me the life I want. And the reason I, I really got involved with all the senior stuff with Barry and this fantastic group of realtors specializing in that is a huge part of my business is referrals. It's almost 70% of my business last year was past client referrals and repeat business. So what else can I add that's going to help to serve them? And I'm getting, I'm getting the referrals and mom and dad and you know, I want to know what to do with those referrals and how to service them extremely well. So I think it's going to open up other doors by specializing in that seniors market within my community and building up all those channels as I've been doing. It's um, certainly opening up doors for me within the community and creating that niche as well. But but it was just really meant to serve this, this initial target market. And of course, there's spin-off. But, but I think what I want to say to all of you is like whatever you're passionate about and you know whatever turns you on, get up in the morning and go out and have a great day, I think that's when you're kind of being your best self. And that's where you're going to make friends and that's where business is going to come from because it's about relationships. I mean, not always. You can door knock and you can do it a hard way or maybe you love that and that's not hard for you. But for me, it's my worst nightmare, like make cold calls. I'd rather... I thought it would work at the Tim Hortons. Can I say something? <laughs> people, I look at every stat there is for everybody. Cold calling is 99% gets you. You got a 1% return. Yeah. And then 1% negative. I don't know. So what can you do to go out and be awesome, right? And figure out what that interest is, and just go be engaged in the community. And be, you know, for me, it's being part of the real guys. It's about running fundraisers for the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation. I was lucky to really become their spokesperson over the last couple of years. I had TV opportunities. I had, you know, um, journalists calling me to write articles about yard sale and, and all that, right? So I think just by living your passion, doors open for you, and and you're having a good time. So, you know, there's still stressful days and all that. You have to do a really good job of what you do and spend the money. Like, I spend money on staging and really good photography and really excellent marketing for my listings because I think those are the three things that are kind of getting me referrals. But other than that, be cheap, save your money, then you don't have to do as many deals over your name. Just go play with your friends. <laughs> so one of the most common questions agents have about niches, because it's one of those misunderstood things. Agents have a lot of people around niche because they're afraid of going too small. They are afraid of missing out on the bigger pie. They want their hands in 10 different pies. Do you guys agree with that? Like, uh, a lot of agents go, well, what if, what if this person wants to buy? What if this senior wants to buy and I want to sell this con to this person and it's a commercial deal and there's this and they think they're going to get a piece of that buy. For you guys, when you took that step, were you scared to kind of narrow it? But what was the, also, what was the, the final outcome of that? Because it can be scary, but... So, yeah. yeah, what are seniors? So, a 22-year-old and a 24-year-old. It doesn't mean you're dead to them. No. Just that that's not what you're focused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can still sell outside of Around. Yeah, but it just gives you a focus. It, it gives you that, that financial wedge to get into the marketplace. I mean, I mean, how many times have you seen a guy walking around downtown Toronto and kills? That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it opens doors. I mean, I ended up getting cast on a couple of TV shows. I did a couple of shows for HGTV four years ago. They're still airing it. Again, are you that guy on TV? And my response is, yeah, sorry. That was me. Toast. <laughs> but once somebody's got to open that door and talk to you and they've got something in common with you and they just think they're going to be able to work with you mm -hmm. and 
and that's Michelle says, you, you, you just serves the heck out of the, the client. And they're going to refer you. So you're going to get the realm developing. It's going to be people that are the same mindset, the same sort of value set that you've enjoyed working with that first contact. And the nice thing is you get to work with people that like all the time. Instead of houses, I don't really like houses that much. People without people. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know what? One of the ways that you said that Saturday nights, what's a Canadian thing? You go to somebody's house you've never been to, and you go, Would you like to see my house? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care if you do it. My answer is, I don't know. I can sit to the rooms, to wherever we sit. I really don't want to see more houses. I'm sitting in nothing else. You're dead on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work with people. I don't sell houses. My favorite house for me would be my people. <laughs> I think like you, like Ryan asked, you know, it's, it's a scary, right? It's a scary to start a business. It's scary to go out and become a realtor in the first place. Of course it is. And then, you know, you're not going to have business your first, your first month in the job. Just like with focusing on a niche, you know, you might not have all the business that you're expecting your first month, two months in. But as time progresses, you're gonna you're gonna have more value, and you're gonna have more clients, you're gonna have more people who know who you are, and, and it just grows exponentially. And I, I think that it's tremendous value in specializing in something. I think you know it's done wonders for my business specifically, and you, you can grow it. You know, the sky's the limit that you want to grow. And like Barry said, it's, <coughs> agents are a commodity. Ninety-nine percent agents are a commodity. And one way to make yourself not a commodity is by having a niche. So when someone says, I need a person who does this, if I said, someone says to me, hey, I need a contractor who does basement renovations, I can say, I know this person, or I need someone who does this. When you're that agent and people refer you, like Barry said, they, you know, they don't ask away from me because they know this is what I want, this is what you're good at. Oh, they'll ask, but they won't dig, they won't dig her. Right. Yeah. By the way, it, um, uh, um, say that, uh, Kmart. Zellers, Sears, Kreskies, Woolworths. So, who's coming in? Nordstrom's, Saks Fifth Avenue. Think about it. Quality. You know what? They couldn't compete on the place. None of them could. You're, you'll compete to the seller. You'll compete to the seller. I'm sorry, I'm not interested. I'm interested in, I think the, the Norse, I've never been to, those of you that have never been into a Norse Norse, they're beyond amazing. You walk in and you say, I want shoelaces. What color? They're not even near the department. They'll take you three levels down, they'll take you and hand you off to someone else, and you can hire your room. There are only have people there to make sure you're not stealing. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I have this, I, I, I mean, it's not a thing. Um, you do not find me alone. I will not go into the wall. Well, I don't win because of political reasons. I think they're evil, so I won't show them. Um, Ryan, that's are we allowed to talk here? Yeah, we have some questions. Ryan, Michelle, I just want to talk to you and Barry. Not, but Michelle, I started before my children were even born. Yes. And I did everything that you did and worked the community. And what's great about it is I believe, remember Young and Dating Mary? Um, I believe that your niche changes. Yeah. And as uh, you, yeah. So you're talking about a niche, and this is what just is yelling in my head. Your niece changes as your kids grow. Yes. My kids have gone to university or out in BC now, and they're 30 odd years old, we won't say how old. And now I'm working with the older folk and their kids yes. who weren't even a gleam in their eye. And taking care of the community and the business and being at Scouts and Beavers. The beaver leader called me from my kid when he was five, and I am going to list his property on Saturday. So this is like so amazing that your niche changes, and I'm working with tons of older people and probate and estates, the same thing. So, Michelle, everything you're doing now, it's going to pay off. <laughs> and being a mom and doing community stuff, yeah. it, you know... I, and it's, it's so exciting. interesting because we were talking about this yesterday too, you know, like, and, and my biggest fear, I had started my business in Brampton, and then when I got ready to have my children, we bought a house in Milton, and I'm like, well, I need to make this move because I don't want to be commuting, and I don't want to be like so branched out, but I also didn't want to alienate all those clients I had originally, you know, 
met. So I had clients in Mississauga, clients in Brampton, and then this new Milton market I was trying to grow. And I think the biggest fear for me in really like specializing in or making that jump and being that community person was, am I going to alienate all of my other people? And the truth is, that's not the case at all. People already know who you are. And so you might, I guess you could possibly try off some people, but uh, in my experience, I'm still getting calls. And, and the calls I get from clients who aren't in the market where I'm the specialist now is, Oh, will you come out here? Like, I'm like, but you know, I'm, you know, I'm not the specialist out there. And they're like, no, 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 but we trust you, right? Like, we like you. We trust what you think, and that's sort of, I think. Thing. It's the local grocery store. I'm still old fashioned. I, I know nothing about Facebook, and honestly, because of me, it doesn't. I do, just do things yeah. differently. Standing in line at the bank instead of going online. Just the face to face, and I think we were talking about connection this morning, and another, the first one I went to in spirituality, and the connection is missing, and that's why. When you're home with the kids and you're walking, I go walking still in my farm area when the ladies are out pushing the carriages. So it never changes, but you just add and you get to do new things, and yeah. it's it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and it certainly does change with the stage you're in in your life, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because I found when I was a first-time buyer, I attracted first-time buyers. Now that I'm in the position I'm in now, it's always move up buyers, right? So I can see how it'll be an evolution. Mm -hmm. and I think you just need to be open to it and engage in your life. Thank you for letting us. Yeah, thank you. What would your advice be to someone who lacks a certain passion or is having difficulty finding? I would. There, there, there's a great book, um, so good they can't ignore you, and it's a great book. But it's about being so good at it that you become passionate. About it. You don't have to have passion first, but if you're so amazing at what you do, passion becomes in being great. I learned a great lesson from my father. Uh, he worked as a shop manager at GE, and he got so passionate about sweeping the floors, and he, was, he said, I'm the best shop floor sweeper you'll ever meet, and he kept doing it. His manager noticed that he put so much effort into it and said, hey, you know, you're really working hard, you're really working your butt up. Do you want to think about being a system manager? He worked his way up, became a system manager, became a manager, and became so good at it, he became the entire uh, warehouse manager, he said it was because I was a good sweeper. So, Find something you're good at, or may not be good at, but get good at it, and just put everything time into it. I don't think it's bad to ask for help. Yeah, yeah. to be honest, with you. it's a really tough thing. I had a company that I hired to do this brand because I I didn't evolve my brand; I reinvented my brand. Um, I used to put out a pack of Portuguese water dogs, I had two black ones and two white ones, and that was my brand. That was my my whole deal. Well, the dogs don't last forever, unfortunately. And being a realtor, it really wasn't a good fit for me because it was never home. So I decided, okay, great, I love my dogs, but they're not part of the business. That's my personal life. So what I'm going to do about that about my second one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really nice. So start just sit down with your friends and family one afternoon and say, you know, what is it about me that, you know, if you had to say three things that, I, that I'm into, what would you say? And, and they'll, well, be must have interest. they'll be brutally I honest. Do it. I just don't. I struggle with how do I take those interests and use my business. What are you into? I'm a massive sports solid. That's my Yeah, but don't thing. think of it as how can I use this in my business. Think right. of this as how can I that's enjoy my life and make about. friends along the way. Yeah, right. Not to sound kind of and, corny, no, but I think that's it, right? In your example, I, I, started a, yeah. I started a soccer team. Yeah. Yes. And I, I promoted the, the name of the team was you know, yes. score a hole at Mike's just as way to advertise. Um, and from that I met, you know, seven or eight guys that I'll do business with in the future. Yes. How do I take that sort of to the next level to Yeah, you have to sponsor kids on the team. Totally. Right. There's got to be Facebook. You know, there's tons of sponsors, yeah. but I think coaching gets you. Coaching gets you a lot more to That's yeah. where the passion is. Asset Tom, he was on the niche agent. He's a fantastic guy. He's involved with the kids uh, hockey team. He gets, I think it's like 75 or 80 something. There's an associate of mine that's coaching kids hockey for three years. His client base now is probably 80% professional NHL players. The kids have all made it. Perfect. He was a great coach. <laughs> but, yeah. but I mean, that's his bread and butter. And he's coaching kids hockey. And it's a little scary at first because you feel like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just like, I'm just doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 On that, no, just on that note, for one second. Most of what I, I, my thing is charities and stuff and raising money and making a lot of money gives you the passion to be able to do it. Uh, I'm a slag, give it all away. You know, like, 
that's just the way it is, but I don't, and Canada Revenue won't let me. Um, but you do it when you join something, you do it with passion for it, because if you do it for the sake of getting the business, yes. you can smell it, yeah. you can see yeah. it, I don't you're want dead. Sour right about you're it. dead. And obviously you have to be doing other things, like you have to be maintaining a database, you have to be, you have to be looking very professional also in your business, so that's a piece that like, with this whole like Lucy Goosey just have a good time thing, you also have to have a pretty strong brand I think, so that people can be like, yeah, I take you seriously as a professional, even though, you know, I take you seriously as a girl or you know, like, I think there has to be both, it can't just be, or maybe it can be, but, well, it's compensating. I guess for all of you, are you actually, um, do you find yourself asking for business, or do you find that just by, I don't know, like in your case, Reed, with regards to uh, your, your joy for malt, you're just having people come over and talking about malt, they, how do they find out that you are who you are? That's why I'm hard to miss. Well, it's hard to miss me. Well, you have an example. Thank you. I know you're Another one of the things I like is I enjoy a cigar once in a while. Right. Yeah. So, uh, in Burlington, there's this nice little shop they've opened up, they've got a great Selection of cigars, so I agree with them. Mm -hmm. They've started doing little things on the weekend. Come on, we have a promo with a cigar, you can come have a beer, stand on our patio, we've been licensed for that. So I'm standing there having a smoke, I'm in the kill. Yeah. And somebody says, Why are you going to kill? I said, I work in it. What the hell do you do that you can work in a kill? <laughs> Here's my car. Yeah. Now that's it. it yeah. No example, they look at you and say, oh, you're a, yeah, what's a mom thing? So um, I have the back of my van deckled. My, my caravan, oh, okay. which I drive very proudly, is deckled. Right. Yeah. Um, it has my website, it's ihousemom.com. And, um, and and I have people over at my house sometimes, so the, the cars in the driveway, everybody kind of knows who I am and what I do, yeah. even by my social media efforts, because I do a lot of Facebook advertising in the community too, just promoting local events and things like that, okay. that I think people are interested in. But you know what I find is I, I would never ask for the business in my house, right? Right. But, but the moms will be like, oh, Michelle, I, I hate to bring this up. This is kind of awkward because I know you're at home and you're not at work. Like, do you mind if I ask you a real estate question? Like, people yeah. want to talk about real estate, bad, you know? Bad. They're embarrassed to bring it up because they don't want to invade my personal time. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So they just trust you and like you. So they want to ask you because you're their friend, right? right. Oh, well, people feel like we're asking you for free advice, but it always rolls into business. And then they're, yeah. they're you know, suggesting me to other people. So at this point, you've got to be aggressive. Um, I started something for fun uh, some years ago because we were all connected on Facebook and I got mad one day and I said, we all don't know each other. And I said, I got three barbecues and we started to uh, a real group apart with 40 people. This summer, this summer, almost 300 people showed up from across Canada. We raised $10,500 for Alzheimer's research at Baycrest. Um, once every six weeks, I throw events. And um, I have great speakers. I got Virginia coming up next month. I've, uh, I've had uh, Rebecca Mountain, Bob Ayer, and Mark Wise. And this was my passion of bringing realtors together. And I had not dinner the other day with Mrs. Saga, which was um, don't ever, ever try to have a nice, quiet meal at um, Earl's. He got mad at me. Um, somebody you know, I Anyways, he got mad at me. He says, You're bringing all these events. How do you live? I said, Live off referrals. He says, You got all these realtors coming to all these events. How many referrals are you getting from all these people? I said, I, I don't know, a few here and there. He says, You know, you don't ask. So there's a point where you can do what you want to do. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And it's, 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 a, a, fine, comfortable. it's a fine line. So you have to let people know. I, 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 if I may, I worked 30 years in one association. I just double ended the way to buy a deal because one of the chairs called me. And 30 years, I got nothing. Now I double ended a nice deal for me. I had a full commission. Yeah. And that was worth it. But I never went into that association wanting to do business. I did it because of what I wanted to do. Yeah. And you can wear different hats in different places, right? So a lot of people do it. I would like to ask you, Barry, you're, you're dealing with estates and probates and trusts. And do you do you go behind that individual, and, and I don't mean in referrals, but do you approach 
like is, do you have a system for approaching the lawyers or uh, or okay like, I saw them I just did this this morning I was in Barry kicking off their annual event and I did this this is what I was talking about I sold 100 homes my first year I was 21 and I sat back and I was a, I was a, if a cop was coming off a shift at midnight I would start showing them houses between 1 and 2 in the morning vacant houses and stuff that I'd take <laughs> Oh. Uh, I was I was working hours, but I realized after a year, um, I don't know how many I'm pregnant for a year, but I guess she did. Um, I couldn't bird keep that up, so I realized that people only turn over for five years back in those days. I think it's three and a half, four years, whatever the stat is. Mm -hmm. How are you going to make a business where people don't turn over? You know, you've got to turn them over. Light bulbs have to burn out, so you're not going to sell light bulbs. I decided to, I made a pact to myself. I just did a mailing to my client base, 2,200 lawyers. I only solicit lawyers, yeah. accountants, trustees, and other realtors. I don't deal with the public. Uh, people phone me all the time to advertise, promote. I'm doing one thing right now with the public, which is new for people, but I wrote a book on um, States and it's on Facebook for people to download. That's different. That's passive. But um, I don't want to deal with the public. For 46 years I've dealt with lawyers. I made a huge mistake. And I admit it. I got complacent. I got lazy. I lived off those lawyers. I was a kid. I was in my 20s. I was in my 30s. I was in my 40s. And by my 50s, they were all dying. They were retiring or dying. And I wasn't replacing. And that was a mistake, and I'm paying for it now. I am actually now cold calling 10 lawyers every day. Well, I have a friend in San Diego who put out, she does only probate. And that's why I'm asking if you have a system, because I'd really be interested to see what system it is that... We'll be, I'll be in Ottawa on Monday. We'll talk Monday. Thank you very much. I want to add to that, because... A mistake that a lot of people make is they do find a niche and they work it, and then, like Barry says, they don't replace it. They go, like, I own this. And a good friend of mine said, Say that you've arrived in any event in your life. If you say you've arrived, you failed. So if you're in a niche, and you're, even if you're the top person in that niche, you're the only one doing it. If you're doing it, people are watching you, there's someone you. There's someone looking at you, copying So you need to be above, you need to be on top of your game, you need to be always forward thinking, because if you're not, it's easy to slip, or the market can change. Yeah, Zane just said, success is never finished. It's true. It's always great. That's better than the ball. I think it was a very famous thing. Success is never finished. Yeah, right. you, know, you got to keep promoting. Um, I've discovered there's two people that I know of online that are marketing themselves as the Kilbury Realtors. One of them. Is it Ottawa? Is it Ottawa. <laughs> One in Oregon, and then just discovered a young man in Georgetown. Um, yeah. Who I was born in Fergus. So I guess flattery, you know, the temptation is just to just for flattery, but I, you, you gotta dial it up and keep on top of it, or you can't get a place to answer for it. I mean, the niche, the niche always evolves too, right? And the niche always grows. And I'll give you a perfect example with my niche in private thing. So when I first started, and to answer your question, you always ask for business. I always ask for business. That's how I got my name out there. That's how I became prominent. So I would go to mortgage offices. I would say, hey guys, do you have any deals on your desk that you can't close? Can I have a look at it? And that's how I got to know people. They would tell somebody else in the office. When you, when you hand somebody a commission check, they're your best friend after that, right? And they'll tell everybody, hey, this guy made And so the next guy had some a bigger commission. <laughs> But what happened in that is that, um, you know, I got to know my investors. My investors were earning a return. So my business is, is a solution for two people. It's a solution for a borrower and a buyer. It's also a solution for an investor looking to earn a return. So I have two people that I'm focused on. But what's come from it now, when I'm more experienced and more prevalent in the niche, is I've taken that investor side, and we're actually opening a private lending company now. So we've got a pool of funds. We're branding ourselves. We're opening a company. So the niche is ever evolving. The niche is still growing. It's getting bigger, it's developing. So it's, 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 it's just like Barry said, you're not staying complacent. You're going to grow as the business grows, just like any other business. They say you should get older in life. You should always get friends that are younger because your friends will be gone. 
And the same with your client. My clients, I bought, I had clients that we can't believe the product was a slice to get from. But then, we can't get business from that person more than once. <laughs> the best thing of all in our business, for all of us in this room, is divorce. Divorce is one of the greatest It's the best deal in real estate for everybody, down to the movers and the shrinks, look after the kids. Therefore, it is obligatory for realtors to go out and spread rumors. <laughs> and one thing else to remember, can I just throw one last thing in there? I have thought. Um, like when you are kind of marketing to friends and making friends and kind of working your business that way, especially if it's in a smaller community, um, be sure that you, you know, you wear different hats at different times. So it's okay if you're in a public event to capture their email address at that moment. So if I'm Michelle Realtor at a community show and I'm holding a contest, you know, you're my buddy, but like come and sign up for my mailing list now because today's the day where you become part of my database. Right. <laughs> so we've got a couple minutes left. So is there any last minute burning questions before we... Can I just add something? This gentleman in the red... Yes. I'm sorry, what's your name? Mike. We're talking about a passion. Are you married? Yes. Okay. I didn't ask because I don't want to go out with you. <laughs> a little younger than me. Um, if you have a spouse, there's something else. If you have a spouse that has a business, I had a spouse... Look the body yet? Um, <laughs> I think somebody will. Um, and we had this amazing business together. And I never talked about it as I walked in, but I had everything all over the walls. My for sale signs, all my new feature sheets, everything I sold, and never said a word. And my business cards. So where's the fine line? You have your spouse or somebody who has a business like that to help you. So I, I thought about where's your passion? Okay, you can have that passion, but you also have to have somebody else helping you with that passion or allowing you that opportunity to do that. Even your own every cousin and every tons of people tell you why you can't make it. There there's an American on a dock in Nova Scotia. He sees this bucket of lobsters. And he says to the uh, lobster system, there's no lid on that bucket. No, just, but they're clawing their way up. Don't you worry, you're going to escape me. Those no, sir, you don't have to. Those are those be Canadian lobsters. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, as soon as one gets up near the top, the other's going right back down. <laughs> <laughs> and just be careful when you're working with friends and family. This is another thing, like it's pretty obvious to some, but maybe you don't have to do it. But um, make sure if you're dealing with friends or family, you show up as a realtor. Don't show up as their friend when you're doing business with them because you really need their referrals, right? The only way to do that is to be taken seriously. Show up on time, dressed in a suit, with your Always, always, always have the best presentation yes. possible for family and friends yes. over everyone else. Yes. All right, so we are just out of time. So I want to say thank you for you guys for being here. It's great. Where am I going next? Everybody's coming. So thank you guys for being here.